Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel for a new Databricks video. Today's video would be about Databricks asset bundles. They are quite new, but they gain popularity quite fast, and there is a reason for that. So what are Databricks asset bundles? Databricks asset bundles are a tool to facilitate CI-CD, continuous integration and delivery, code review, testing and source control. Yes, I know we are data engineers, we are not DevOps engineers, so why do we care? because they are pretty easy to learn, at least the basics, and they are a very nifty tool to define an end-to-end -end project and deploy it to different environments. I am amazed myself of how easy it is to define your infrastructure and deploy your project. Bear in mind, I'm quite new to Databricks Asset Bundles myself. The first time I worked with Databricks Asset Bundles was in my current project, and I thought, okay, that's a pretty nifty tool, so at least I need to know the basics, because as data engineers we also participate in this process because we have to define our data pipelines, etc, etc, right? So, what we are going to do in this tutorial is to learn together and we are going to follow the official documentation of Databricks, we are going to follow their tutorial. Let's get down to business. So before we jump into the codes, let's take a quick look on the documentation, what Databricks documentation says about Databricks asset bundles. Databricks asset bundles are a tool to facilitate the adoption of software engineering best practices, including source control, code review, testing, and continuous integration and delivery CICD, for your data and AI projects. Bundles make it possible to describe Databricks resources such as jobs, pipelines and notebooks as source files. These source files provide an end-to-end -end definition of a project, including how it should be structured, tested and deployed, which makes it easier to collaborate on projects during active deployment. This is very true, I witnessed this myself in my current project. So this is a diagram, it describes on a very high level how the asset bundles work, we, you have the project bundle here, you can manually deploy the code and the infrastructure to the dev environment and you can also have version control here and CICD to deploy to staging and production. When should I use Databricks asset bundles? Databricks asset bundles are an infrastructure as code approach to managing your Databricks projects. Use them when you want to manage complex projects uh, where multiple contributors and, automations and automation are essential and continuous integration and deployment are a requirement. Oh well, pretty much uh, at work, that's for sure. Since bundles are defined and managed through YAML templates and files you can create and maintain alongside source code, they map well to scenarios where infrastructure as code is an appropriate approach. You have some examples here, some ideal scenarios, on when to use bundles. Uh, how uh, do Databricks asset bundles work? Bundle metadata is defined using YAML files that specify the artifacts, resources and configuration of a Databricks project. You can create this YAML file manually or generate one using bundle template. Databricks CLI can be used to validate, deploy and run bundles. We'll, we will see that in a little bit. Okay, so now the first thing we are going to do is create a bundle manually. Why manually and not using the template? I think it's better this way at, at least the first time to understand how, how things work. And we are going to follow the documentation completely. We are not going to digress. It's a very, very simple. So here in these steps, we create a bundle from scratch. The simple bundle consists of two notebooks and the definition of a Databricks job to run these notebooks. You then validate, deploy it, run the deployed notebooks from the job within your Databricks workspace. So, you have to create a bundle. You have to create an empty directory, pretty easy. Use, uh, use, if you are using VS Code, whatever uh, development tool you are using, you have to navigate to this empty directory. And then we have to add two notebooks. So let's create this file. The first thing we have to create is to add the notebooks. How can you add the notebooks? So for example, here you copy this code here and you create a Python file named retrieve-baby-names. So copy the code here, 
Come on. Copy the code here. Go to your VS Code. Create a Python file. Save it as uh, what was the name? Retrieve baby names. Let's go back here and save this code. Okay, so now we have the first step. So we have a Python code that downloads a CSV file, right? Let's go to the next step. Then we want a second notebook named filter dash baby dash names. So this is the code. So we we'll copy this code. Actually, let me copy the name first. Back to VS Code, we create another Python file. Then we copy this code. We paste it here. We save. And now we have two notebooks. Pretty easy, right? So you, you have those notebooks for your business logic. Add a bundle configuration schema file to the project if you are using a uh, Visual Studio, or Python, Professional, or IntelliJ uh, that provides support for YAML files, etc., etc. Now, if you are using Visual Studio Code, like me, you copy this command, you go to your VS Code, you start a new terminal, paste this command here, perfect. Now, if we go to our, let me go to the empty folder here, as you can see, we have this bundle config schema. Now, if you open that, uh, you will see all this configuration here. It's a pretty big JSON uh, file. Okay, the next thing is, uh, note that, uh, that later in step five, you will add the following comment to the beginning of your bundle configuration, which associates your bundle configuration file with the specified JSON schema file. Setup authentication, we have already done that. Add the bundle configuration file to the project. So we have to create a databricks.yaml here, right? So let's go back to VS Code, create a databricks.yaml, and let's paste the uh, here the YAML that they provide here. Let's copy that, paste it here. Now, as you can see here, the name of the bundle is baby dash names. Then we have resources, jobs. This is uh, the job name here, retrieve filter baby names job. And we have, we're using a job cluster with one uh, number of workers. Now here, this is uh, a new type ID. This, uh, it doesn't, at least my environment does not support this uh, uh, this no type, so I am I am going to use a pretty standard DS3 v, uh, versus uh, version two uh, no type uh, number of workers one, and then we have the tasks. We have two tasks that point to those two Python files that we created. The first one uh, is to retrieve the baby names. Remember, here we download the CSV file, and in the next one we are uh, using this CSV file and we perform some actions here, a query, etc, etc. And that's why here we define the first action, the first task, and then on the second task, this filter baby name task depends on the previous task that we have defined up here, right? That's that's why you need a sequential order, I think, uh, in order to use the task key and then job cluster ID, the same job cluster ID, ID. So both tasks are using the same job cluster. And here we have, we point to the second notebook. Then we have targets, development, workspace and host. And we have to replace this workspace URL. So let's go back here to our environment. Let's copy that, paste it here. And I think we are good to go. So the next step, uh, the next step is actually, let's go back here. Uh, okay. Validate your project's bundle configuration file. So we copy this database bundle validate. We go here to our terminal. We paste the command database bundle validate. 
we are waiting for the validation let's see what we get if a summary of the bundle configuration is returned then the validation uh, succeeded if any errors are returned fix the errors then repeat the same step okay so we are waiting if you make any changes to your bundle after this step you should repeat this step to check whether your bundle configuration is valid okay so the validation is successful as you can see we have the name the target the workspace and it says validation okay perfect it passed the validation now the next step is actually to deploy the local project to the remote workspace copy this command again copy here and paste it here to your terminal and it should deploy the bundle to your databricks as you can see the deployment has been completed we have upload, uploaded the bundle files to this path here as, as you can see it says deploying resource updating deployment state deployment complete pretty easy right so let's go back to our databricks workspace and here if we go into our workspace we will see dot bundle baby names development files and here you will see all the code here development again here you can see the artifacts and the state right so uh, if we go back to the documentation what the documentation says check into users your username dot bundle baby names development files folder the new two notebooks should be in this folder now also we should have a workflow okay let's go to workflows and here we have our workflow let's click on the workflow and see the tasks as you can see the first task points to the first notebook and the second using the common cluster that we defined and here uh, it points to the second uh, to to the second uh, notebook and the second task depends on the first task this is exactly what we defined here let's go back to databricks yaml so here remember we named two one day one databricks job with two tasks one task is to retrieve the baby names and then the second task is to filter baby names that depends on the retrieve baby names task which is the first task right so this as you can see it's pretty easy to define all those things on a yaml now it's a very neat way actually to define your jobs i was uh, pretty frustrated in the past with yaml files but i think uh, with time they they are getting better and probably i'm also getting more familiar with yaml files and here we have the targets the workspace and the host right pretty easy to define a job okay so let's see and uh, okay we have this workflow we have the jobs and then run the deployed project so if you want to run this job you can use again databricks bundle dot run minus t development retrieve and the name of the job so you copy that you paste it here And now if we go back to our Databricks environment, so let's go to jobs. Let's see. Yep, at some point it should. Let's refresh and see. Yeah, as you can see, uh, the job is being run pretty uh, successfully. Now, this is perfect. This is what we wanted uh, to display here using this example give it a second my internet is pretty slow okay and you can see this job is now spinning up a cluster the job cluster that we provided in our databricks yaml file and it's going to run the job pretty easy right so the last step is to destroy the bundle if you want to delete the two deployed notebooks and the job from your workspace you copy this command here again you paste it to your terminal and it's going good to destroy the bundle right perfect so this is the complete tutorial about how to develop a databricks asset bundle 
uh, manually, right? So it's pretty easy. As you can see, we create the job with two tasks. One is depending on the first, uh, on the other, and you can achieve this by just using only a Databricks YAML file here and uh, the notebooks. You get the Databricks notebooks with the business logic. As you can see, it's so so easy, and you can do that manually at home following the documentation. And I think uh, you have to give it a go because actually Databricks asset bundles are pretty nifty, I think. It's the first time that I thought, okay, maybe it's time to start learning more about DevOps because it's easy also for data engineers to do that. And you can deploy to different environments, you can build your pipeline and, you know, and achieve this automation that we want. This is it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video about Databricks Asset Bundles. Again, we didn't do anything spectacular. We just followed the documentation. You can do that alone at home. It's pretty nifty. Actually, it's a uh, Databricks Asset Bundles are quite new, but they are also quite amazing because you can do so many things using Databricks Asset Bundles and they are not so difficult to understand. It will take a bit of time, but it's not that difficult, especially if you start building your knowledge from simple examples like the documentation and like the examples we will do uh, the next time. The next time we are going to use the uh, bundle template and also point tree to install Python wheels uh, to our cluster. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please click the like button, subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.